Does anybody else geek out over teacher supplies? Like, I cannot be the only one that loves, like, a fresh pack of cardstock. Like, that feeling you get whenever you open it up, and especially the colored kind, and it's so pretty. <laughs> I cannot be the only one that geeks out about that kind of stuff, right? As teachers, we love teacher supplies. We love school supplies. There is nothing better than opening up a package of lamination or buying like brand new dice and you don't even want to give them to your students because you don't want them to mess them up. That that can't be only me, right? <laughs> right? Like I feel like my husband would not care about colored paper. And I don't even think that my like my friends outside of the teaching profession would care about colored paper, but I do. Those are things that are important. <laughs> Which leads me to today's video and what we're going to talk about. I'm going to be sharing some of my must-have materials for getting started with math stations. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button below and let's dive in and get started. Hey y'all, welcome back. My name is Marcy Bernithi and I am the teacher author behind saddleupforsecondgrade.com where I love to help teachers just like you implement guided math successfully into their day without feeling stressed out and overwhelmed. I think we're all in agreement now that teachers, we love supplies. We love paper and we love organization and all the pretty things, right? And so I'm gonna be sharing some of my top must-haves to get you started when it comes to implementing math stations in your classroom. And number one, I've already shared it, like just getting ready to share this with you guys makes me like makes my teacher heart so happy. And that is cardstock. Look at how pretty it is. Just look at how pretty it is. It's beautiful, right? <laughs> so my number one recommendation for when it comes to creating your math stations and getting them prepped and things like that is to print your materials on to cardstock. It doesn't even have to be colored, but what I like about it is that it's going to make your materials last longer, especially if you do laminate your resources once you have them printed off. So I'm going to recommend printing all of your materials onto cardstock and then laminating them for durability so that they will last you for years and years to come. Whereas if you just print out on regular computer paper, even sometimes with lamination, they tend to rip a lot easier. So cardstock just is better in the long term for durability. And it's really pretty. <laughs> okay, my number two must have are poly zip folders. These are really durable plastic zipper pockets that allow you to store all of your materials inside. Now, let me share why these are better than a Ziploc bag. So when I first started creating my math stations, I stored everything in a Ziploc bag. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's a very affordable option. But the problem that I ran into is when you have a full size direction page, especially if it's laminated, when you put them inside of a Ziploc bag, the the top wouldn't zip up, and so my pieces would often fall out. So a couple of years ago, I discovered these poly zip folders. You, they come um, also in a mesh version too, and they work just as great. But what I love about it first is that I can fit a full-size direction page inside, and it's laminated, and the zipper will close at the top so none of my pieces fall out. Then there's also enough space in here. I've got um, a set of recording sheets. I've got my task cards. Everything that I need for the activity can fit inside this zip folder. And there's lots of extra space inside. So if you needed to put dice or maybe game cubes or game pieces or something like that, whatever it might be that your students might need, they can easily fit inside these poly zip folders. And so I'm gonna put a link in the description that's gonna take you to um, a link of these on Amazon. This is an affiliate link, which means I just earn a small commission that is no extra cost to you. And so um, anything that I share in this video, you can find that in the Amazon link below. So poly zip folders are an absolute must. They 
are great for organization. They keep everything all together in one place and you're not going to be losing pieces all the time. All right, number three is all about math manipulatives. So when you're doing math stations, your kids are going to constantly need to have access to several different types of manipulatives in your classroom because the purpose of math stations is to spiral review, right? And so something that you can do so that you are not having to prep manipulatives each week is to incorporate math tubs. I have a whole separate YouTube video all about math tubs if you would like to go and check that out. But these are my saving grace when it comes to math manipulatives. So I'm gonna give you just a quick rundown. They're a shoebox size container. Every student has one container. On the inside, there is an individual set of math manipulatives. So kids have their own tin frame. They have their own colored counters. They have their own set of linking cubes. They've got number cards. They have access to a hundreds chart and so much more. Everything that they would need is all in a centralized location. And then what I love about these is they're 100% independent. So on the inside, I have a label that tells how many of each item that the kids should have. And so they are 100% in charge of these. So they know maybe they need base 10 blocks for an activity. So instead of you prepping base 10 blocks ahead of time or having kids go and dig through your community supplies, they can get the materials that they need from their math tub. So I'll also leave um, a link to my math tub blog post in the description below in case you want to learn more about math tubs and how you can set them up in your classroom. All right, number four are dry erase pockets. I absolutely love these little things. You can get them. Um, they are super affordable. But what I like about this is it cuts down on your material prep. So you can take an activity whether it be something similar like this, or maybe if it's just a recording sheet for a set of task cards, but you can place the activity or recording sheet inside the dry erase pocket. And then kids can use a dry erase marker to answer and solve their problems. And then what's great about this is you don't have to have multiple copies of things. So you can just maybe run off let's say six copies of this activity. And then once kids complete it, they can erase, they can complete it again. And then it's also ready for the next group and you're not having to deal with a whole bunch of paper. So dry erase pockets will be your absolute best friend for dealing with paper chaos and cutting down on copies. Then my last set of must have materials are going to be transparent spinners and dice for differentiation. So what I love about transparent spinners is that you can use these on any type of spinner activity because they're clear and transparent. They lay flat on any spinner page. And so they can be used for multiple, multiple activities. You can have your kids use a pencil and a, um, and a paper clip. That works just fine. But if you're anything like me, you're always going to have a few kids who can never figure out the whole pencil paper clip thing. Um, and so I just love these transparent spinners because they work with any type of spinner activity. And then I love, these are probably one of my favorite things ever when it comes to differentiation. And that is going to be using dice. These are actually called whiz dice. I'm not going to open this up because if I do, they will all fall out and that would be terrible. <laughs> but, um, these are called whiz dice. You can get them on Amazon. You can find them in the link below. But what they are, it's probably, you're going to get a random assortment of dice. I mean, it's like 200 some odd random dice, but they come in all different kinds. So you can see here, like I have anything from, I've got three-sided dice. I've got six-sided dice. I've got some 10-sided dice in here. And they have all different kinds of numbers. So some range from like zero through 10, some range anywhere from like 10 to 100. Um, and then there's even a couple that have larger three digit numbers. And so these are great when it comes to differentiation because I can have the same activity, but my kids might just be using a different set of dice to differentiate the numbers that they're working with. So you can find, these are called whiz dice. You can find them on Amazon and they are fabulous. 
So there you have it. Those are just a couple of my must have materials for getting started with math stations. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys in the next video.